Good morning, everyone. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we join together this morning and celebrate this feast day of, of St. Margaret Mary Alacoque, she who received the gift of the devotion of the Sacred Heart from our Lord, let's acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the Sacred Mystery. You were said to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Pour out on us, we pray, O Lord the spirit with which you so remarkably endowed St. Margaret Mary, so that we may come to know that love of Christ which surpasses all understanding and be utterly filled with your fullness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the beginning of the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised previously through his prophets to the Holy Scriptures, the gospel about his son, descended from David according to the flesh, but established as son of God in power, according to the spirit of holiness, through resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, we have received the grace of apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the Gentiles, among whom are you also, who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all the beloved of God in Rome, called to be holy. Grace to you and peace from God our Father in the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has made known his salvation. The Lord has made known his salvation. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has made known his salvation. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has made known his salvation. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The Lord has made known his salvation. Today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Alleluia, Alleluia, 
Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Well, still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to him, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it, because of the preaching of Jonah they repented. And there is something greater than Jonah here. The Gospel of the Lord. I want you to picture a world for a second that's completely the opposite of the world we're living in today. What do I mean by that? Well, in our world where everything is about avoidance of suffering and just enjoy pleasure and take care of you, number one, imagine a world for a second where the entirety of everybody around you is trying to show up one another with greater acts of penance and sacrifice and basically sitting there saying, in essence, I'm going to make myself better because I'm going to be closer to God this way but now also enter into a world where nobody, almost nobody, receives Holy Communion. Interesting, isn't it? Kind of like the bizarre world of our current age. And yet this is the world that St. Margaret Mary was living in during the course of her life. She was living in a time where this great heresy of the church called Jansenism basically had enveloped the church. And that people were so afraid that, like, even the smallest thing was going to take them out of the ability to receive communion, that nobody went. It was like, you'd have maybe, like, only a few people who went to confession 17 seconds before the Mass started, walk up the main aisle, everybody else was too afraid. Now, when we celebrate Mass, we have what's called the penitential act, correct? We said at the beginning, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy... This is meant for all those venal sins that Scripture talks about when it says that the just man sins seven times a day. It's meant to cleanse our hearts to prepare us, as we say, to celebrate the sacred mysteries. It's only when we know we're in mortal sin that we need to refrain and get to confession immediately because you're always going to have little bits and pieces that you're carrying that we're going to need to cleanse our hearts of and venally before we walk up this main aisle. It doesn't mean we still don't need to bring those sins before the Lord in the merciful gift of, the, of, a, of yeah, reconciliation because the grace of the sacrament works to continue to perfect our hearts. But it is something to understand that we're meant to walk up this main aisle and receive our Lord so long as we know we're in a state of grace. But because of this idea that had seeped into the church, particularly in St. Margaret Mary's time, there was a big problem. And yet she, who is considered pretty lowly, and what I mean by that is that she was had a rough upbringing in the fact that she lost a parent at a young age. They moved in with like an uncle and aunt who basically, uh, her and her mother, they moved in with, their, with an uncle and aunt, and it just was a very lousy situation. Take it up a notch in the sense that she finally decides that she wants to enter a convent and go with the, live with the Visitation Sisters, except they kind of look at her and go, man, you are awkward. You are, you are a little out there. And it's kind of one of those things where sitting there, it's like, hmm, with a community like this, right? But yet it's this person who is, who is lowly, who is not looked at as much, that our Lord appears to and says, I want to correct what's going on. I, my heart burns for my people. And I want to give them this gift of love that they're meant to receive. And so this devotion of the sacred heart 
she starts to bring it to the forefront. And being who she was, guess what happened? She suffered greatly in trying to bring this to the forefront. And yet she knew the Lord had put on her heart this authentic call to bring this to the wider church, and this is what she did. And ultimately, it brought about the inflaming of the hearts of all those who were in the pews, such that God's love started to reign once more. You'll see this throughout the history of the church. At various times and places, we get out of whack, and God sends some saint to, like, with a message to try to course correct us back on track. And such was St. Marga Mariana Cope's mission. For you and I, in our own modern world, you and I might not be called to bring a great devotion of Jesus to the forefront uh, out of nowhere, out of thin air. It's okay. But we are called to bring devotion to our Lord, to our Blessed Mother, to the church, into the greater world right now. And to pray for the sanctification of the church and those who are, you know, supposed to be entrusted with its care. That's not easy. But it's something that we're meant to do day in and day out. And indeed we do that sometimes, you know, as we pray in the Mass. But we're meant to do that through our various prayers, offerings, and sacrifices throughout the day. Because we have to realize. Just as the Lord is trying to bring about our conversion of heart to enter into deep communion with us, you have the enemy who's trying to obscure that in every way, shape, and form, twist everything up, mock, the, mock us for even trying, and put us into a place where we don't even want to continue. This happens all the time. To put it into small perspective here and just say it's always moves by God and counter moves by the enemy trying to undo God's moves. And then when God, the enemy starts to get a foothold, the Lord takes it and corrects the course. This is how it's been for the better part of 2,000 years. But we must understand that God's always got one goal in mind. Union with us forever. But particularly union with our hearts in his sacred heart. So much of what we pray each and every day is moving towards that. So are we putting ourselves in a place where our Lord can do those things within, where he can take us on the path he desires? Are we trying to actively detach ourselves from the things that are not of him or even the good things that have become overwhelming, overloading in one area? to open up the space for God to work. We must bring these things to our prayer and ask him for that assistance. But we also can do that today through this wonderful saint we celebrate as we pray together, St. Margaret Mary Alacoque, pray for us. Trusting in our Lord and Savior, let us bring our prayers before him this day. For the church professing Christ as God's Son, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For bishops sharing in the apostolic ministry, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For catechumens seeking the spirit of holiness, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For all people called to a relationship with God, uh, with the God of uh, our with the God of creation, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear for the sick and forgotten, especially chosen by God for as God's beloved holy ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear for all of us.
called to be saints in Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. For the dead, called to the eternal peace of God our Father, we pray to the Lord. For those suffering in the midst of the conflict that is existing right now in Israel, for an abundance of grace and mercy to be poured out, and for peace to once again return to the region, we pray to the Lord. As we lift up Anna Marie Nelson in the prayer of this liturgy, let us also offer up our own prayers to the Lord in the silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord pray. Merciful Savior, strengthen us that we may follow you wherever you may lead, and help our hearts be conformed to your most sacred heart through the intercession of the saint we celebrate today, Saint Margaret Mary Alico. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands have become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the Virgin, blessed Saint Margaret Mary Alacoque, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. It is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness, and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you. As without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the 
fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Robert our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. With blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have, who have seen, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to one another the sign of peace. On your stay, we toil this packet of Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon. There is only one thing I ask of the Lord, only this do I seek, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Now for the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Renewed by partaking of this divine gift, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the example of blessed Saint Margaret Mary Alacoque, bearing in our body the death of Jesus, we may strive to hold fast to you alone. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, just a reminder, as we stated yesterday at Masses, uh, tomorrow is a day of uh, fasting and abstinence that we're offering up in solidarity with the uh, Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem for all the situation that is going on currently in Israel. So fasting is just, again, one full meal, two snacks, and also then abstinence, refraining from meat for the day. So if you can do that as an offering and then for, for, uh, just prayers for peace as well, that would be a wonderful gift to be able to give the wider church right now, especially in the midst of all the sufferings that are going on across our world. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke and we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Amen. Great day, everyone.